Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Monoblutron, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. So after today, videos will once again be available at their normal time, thank you for your extended patience, and I'm celebrating this return to form with a deck I've wanted to examine for a long time. Now Yu-Gi-Oh decks usually fall into one of two categories, either impressively low powered and hanging on by a thread because of access to generic powerful cards, or newly released, untested, and completely bonkers. Now this deck is one of the very few that seems to have been powerful on release, but to decidedly close to everything else in the meta in terms of playability. Let's take a quick look at one of my new favorite decks, Altergeist. So here's the list, and is there anything on this earth sexier than the sight of 17 trap cards? As always, I'll give you a little bit of background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Altergeist is an archetype of spooky specters piloted by Ghost Girl in the anime to an impressive 0% on-screen win rate. These spooky cyber police use their associated trap cards to interrupt their opponent's plays, and play as much of a control style game as possible in Yu-Gi-Oh! They're one of the archetypes that's always felt very close to broken. They have a non-destruction removal tool, normal summon searchers, and pseudo Kieran effects, and finally several critical pieces of their game plan have all fallen into place at the same time. This deck attempts to make use of those pieces as best as possible. Firstly, the release of Link Haribo means it's possible to bin Melu Seek at the cost of your normal summon, which finds you any Altergeist monster from the deck. Secondly, the release of Infinite Impermeance rewards decks that desperately want to activate trap cards, Altergeist is one of those decks, because of the third new tool for the deck, the incredibly powerful Altergeist Multi-Faker. Now this card can be summoned from your hand whenever you activate a trap, and since it just needs to see a trap activated, it can trigger off counter traps as well. When special summoned, including by its own effect, Effect, it allows you to summon an Altergeist from your deck. On your turn, you're using this to get a Melu Seek, link into Altergeist Hextia, which can negate spells and traps, use Melu Seek's effect to add a Marionette tier to hand, pop a trap to reborn Melu Seek at the link point, so after you negate on your opponent's turn, you can float into a Multi Faker, summon that at the link point off of a trap, and summon a Silquidius from deck to net you multiple spell and trap negates, huge advantage bursts, and singular Kieran activations. The deck's intensely combo oriented, and lines are incredibly diverse, but very resilient through hand traps. There's a about 9 spots in the deck that are flexible, and I'm using those to play the maximum amount of Solemns, Anti-Spells, and Imperial Order, though in different metagames it's probably worth considering Torrentials, Mistakes, and similarly powerful answers to top decks. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First we have the Altergeists. 3 copies of Marionetteer, 3 Multifaker, 3 Melu Seek, and 2 Silquidius. Next the Hand Traps, 3 copies of Ash Blossom, and 3 copies of Ghost Ogre. Next are some Draw Spells, I'm playing 2 Desires because I'm a scrub, and 2 Duality because I absolutely only want it on turn one, then literally never again. We've also got one copy of one for one to find an errant Melu Seek. For traps, we've got three copies of personal spoofing, two copies of altergeist materialization, three copies of altergeist protocol, two copies of infinite impermeance, three copies of anti-spell fragrance, three solemn warning, one solemn judgment, and one imperial order. I gotta tell you, it's weird that they unbanned a card that literally just says you win the game. I don't know why they do that. In the extra, we've got two Hextia, maybe should be three, one Prime Banshee, a bunch of generics, uh, five Nightmares, one Ningirsu, one Link Haribo, one Decode, then Firewall, Boralode, Saruya, and Topologic Bomber Dragon for the formats. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Cosmo, and unfortunately we've lost the die roll. This deck excels at going first, but thankfully our opponent's hand isn't particularly scary. They're going to start by setting a copy of Emergency Teleport, likely waiting to activate it until they're sure we're playing something with minimal hand traps. We'll set four, they'll activate the Emergency Teleport, getting themselves a copy of Cosmo Tin Can, adding a copy of Sword Troopers to hand, and porting out for a copy of Slip Rider, which they will use to blind hit one of our set cards. They hit the Impermeance, which is not ideal, but still fine. They're then going to normal summon the Sword Troopers, and use its effect, we will go ahead and Solemn Strike, and even though it's a counter trap, we can activate Multi Faker once the chain is resolved. That's going to net us a copy of Silquidius because, of course, we can target the Cosmo Slip Rider. We will do just that, and because they've wasted their normal summon already, I know there's nothing more I have to be scared of. On our turn, we're going to flip up this copy of Anti Spell Fragrance. They're going to chain a copy of Call of the Haunted. We'll use Silquidius to return the protocol to hand, to return that to hand so it negates the effect. Then we'll activate Multi Faker once that chain is done resolving so we can get a Melu Seek to our side of the board. Special summon a copy of Hextia, then normal summon a Maria Tear that we've searched off the Melu Seek. We're going to get a copy of Alter to materialization and get in for a lot of damage. Finally, we'll pass it back to our opponent. Our opponent's going to draw, and unfortunately, they don't find anything to get them out of this mess since they have to set it. We're going to go into a multi faker again off a of trap activation, this time just getting something that we want to normal summon so we can send that card back to the hand with our copy of Silquidius at end of turn. We're going to go ahead and bounce one of the set cards, then try to get in. Remember, our Hextia can negate anything anyway, and it's game. Our second match is up against Layer Pure, and to every single person currently brewing with Diabolos and Pals, I promise we'll find the right deck for him. 
We're going second, which is not ideal, especially because our opponent has not only Lair, but also Lilith. That instant speed tribute might be problematic. They're going to go ahead and activate Lair, then normal summon the Lilith, and pass it back. Of course, Lair activates every single end step, regardless of if it actually creates any tokens or not. We're going to get a protocol off of this Marionette tier, go to attack, and who? Well, it gets tributed for a copy of Metaverse. In my infinite wisdom, I have not given them any of the virus cards. My opponent draws a Fang of Kretos, a little bit of a spicy tech in this deck, will infinite transience this copy of Armageddon Knight. They will tribute our monster to activate Lilith's effect, and we will negate it with a copy of Solemn Strike. After all this is said and done, we can get the multi-faker out of our hand, getting ourselves a Melu Seek as well. They'll activate a monster gate, we flip protocol, and it negates it? Can someone smarter than me tell me what happened there? They'll then pass it back and get a couple of tokens of their own, because of course tributes occurred. Now we have a Melu Seek on our side of the board, and one of the general rules of this deck is you don't want to let your opponent start their draw step with a Melu Seek on board. We'll link in a Hextia, get ourselves a Marionette tier, destroy our copy of protocol to bring back multi-faker. It does not care where it's special summoned from, it gets a silk Quidius from deck, and now we can start attacking without fear of Lair. We're going to pass it back to our opponent, and they will draw for turn, finding a copy of Allure of Darkness. We're going to Hextia to negate the copy of Metaverse, then we'll activate Protocol to get a Multi-Faker out, so we have something else at the link point to negate the Lair that we know is in the hand. Unfortunately, our opponent has two copies of Lair, so we're going to have to beat through all of them. They Allure of Darkness, and I figure if they don't draw a monster, Silquidius to return the Lair back to the hand is incredible, but of course they do. They'll go to attack the Silquidius, and we get the copy of Protocol that is in Graveyard back to our hand, but this is about the end of the game. We draw into an Imperial Order, god what a beating, and then go to attack step, attacking over the Arima for 300 and directly with Multi-Faker for 5. Now when Multi-Faker attacks directly, we can send one copy on their side of the field of the graveyard, and at end step, when this copy of Lair activates, we'll negate it with the effect of Hextia. That should be the end of the game, we'll use Multi-Faker's effect to get a Marionette tier to our side of the board, I think we're almost out of targets, truthfully, and then on our turn we can just kill our opponent. We're going to go ahead and normal summon the Melu Seek, go into a second copy of Hextia, use Melu Seek for a Silquidius, or a Multi-Faker, or whatever we want then attack for 3,000, 3,100, 16, and 12. Alright, so it's time for game 3, and you know what that means, a best of 3 versus meta. Our opponent is playing Mech Knight Invoked, and I love testing against this strategy. It really tests the resilience and robustness of your own deck, and I had to take 5 takes before I said the word robustness correctly. We're getting to go first, which we're going to do every game this set. We're going to start by activating a copy of Pot of Duality, and who it's got to be scary to see all three of those and watch your opponent take the Ash Blossom. We're going to go ahead and normal summon a Melu Seek. We can't go into Link Haribo because we're under Duality. Our opponent's going to start by making a Jack Knight of the Azure Sky. We will Ash Blossom that sucker. Then they will attack over our Melu Seek. We'll take 1500 at the cost of getting a Marionette tier to hand. In main phase two, they'll go ahead and activate Illustrator the Invoker's Effect, then Spellbook of Knowledge. We'll reveal our set trap card, Imperial Order, which is just a backbreaker in this matchup. We'll go ahead and special summon on a copy of Multi-Faker, getting a second Melu Seek, because of course there's no chance they can attack over it. We'll go into a Hextia, activate the effect of Melu Seek to get another Multi-Faker, flip over this personnel spoofing for another copy of Multi-Faker and a Silquidius to our side of the board, then we'll make another copy of Hextia so we can beat over these monsters and start getting in. We get in for 1,000, 2,100, and 1,600, a little off lethal, but enough to probably control the board for the remainder of the game. We're going to flip up this copy of Altergeist Materialization in draw phase so that we can bounce anything our opponent plays to the hand. They're going to go into battle phase with a copy of the Purple Mech Knight. We will bounce it back to hand. They'll chain by removing it from their side of the board, we'll chain a spoofing and they'll concede. Alright, so it's time for game two, and while the weaknesses of this deck are few and far between, this game does a really good job of exemplifying them. We're going first once again, and we've drawn okay. Two traps and two multi-fakers isn't optimal, but it's certainly far from bad. We're going to go ahead and set those two traps, then pass it back to our opponent. Our opponent's going to start by normal summoning a copy of Alistair that triggers the infinite transients we have set. After this chain is done resolving, we're going to go ahead and special summon a multi-faker from hand, getting a Melu Seek because we really need the search. Our opponent's going to Pot of Desires, and I can't pass this up, I'll go ahead and Ash Blossom it, but unfortunately that move spells my downfall after they banish it for a copy of Purgatrio and special summon a copy of Jack Knight of the Crimson Lotus. They can now attack over our copy of Melu Seek for, ho, oh, 4,900 points of piercing damage, then attack us once again to win the game. <laughs> Well, it's time for that all-important game three, and you can see we've drawn pretty well. We get to go first once again, which is good news. We'll start by normal summoning a copy of Altergeist Marionette Tear, which promptly gets effect failured. Afterwards, I figure there's no time like the present to fire off a pot of duality, which unfortunately gets ash blossomed. Well, what are you going to do when 60% of the opener's hand traps? We'll set one and hope for the best, but thankfully that set card is anti-spell fragrance. Incredible in this matchup. We'll trigger the effect of Multifaker to get a Mela Seek to our side of the board, probably not ahead enough to get a Silquidius yet. Then we'll negate the effect of this A-lister with our own copy of Ash Blossom. They'll attack into this copy of Mela Seek, 
getting us another marionette tier. We draw into a personnel spoofing, we'll set it, then use the effect of marionette tier to reborn our male seek. That prompts a ghost ogre, but with our male seek on board, we should be fine. We'll use marionette tier to get a copy of protocol, attack over this A-lister for 600, then main phase two make Hextia and use the effect of male seek after the link summon to get a copy of multi-faker back to our hand. In draw step, we can get altergeist protocol activated so we can get a monster at the link point of Hextia. They're going to activate the magical meltdown, which we will negate with Hextia's effect. Afterwards, they'll special summon a jack knight of the azure sky and attack over said Hextia, but that unfortunately floats into another copy of Marionette Tier. We're going to go ahead and in our turn, normal summon this copy of Marionette Tier, use its effect to get a altergeist materialization to our side of the board, then link into Hextia, use Melee Seek's effect to get a multi-figure to hand, flip up personnel spoofing to get something at the link point, attack for 700 and then 1200 directly. The game's effectively in the bag at this point. We also have a Solemn Strike set. Our opponent's going to draw into a Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. They'll activate a copy of Pod of Desires, which we will negate. That'll prompt the Ghost Ogre, but we can negate it with a protocol, and they will, after this chain's done resolving, concede. So we're back with the deck. Uh, <laughs> this deck's amazing. Uh, it's, it's really, really good. Uh, but I can promise you, as a dedicated dueling book grinder TM, it is not above the curve in terms of power level. It's got a bit of a shaky matchup versus Trickstar and the like, and I really don't know how much more I can telegraph this deck loses two Pendulum Magicians than three Anti-Spell and an Imperial Order main deck. All in all, this deck rewards deck builders. Now, often the deck building portion of Yu-Gi-Oh! never even enters into the equation when evaluating personal skill, but the flexibility of this deck combined with the power of its searching tools means the individual pre-board hate you're playing could be the difference between a won match and a lost one. So that's that. I personally wish Konami would do the testing necessary to consistently be able to release decks like this that slot into existing metagames without taking it over completely. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time, and if you have a certain idea for a deck or archetype you want to see me explore on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best. Otherwise, I'll see you Wednesday.